Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today we're trying something new. We actually have a full Raspberry Pi gaming setup. We review a lot of mini PCs here, but we don't do a lot of stuff on Raspberry Pis, which are basically little mini PCs that you can do a lot of different things with. And as you can see right here with this kit, you can make a full setup with it. But before we dive into this, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Wondershare and their mobile trans software, which makes it easy to transfer data between iOS and Android phones. Mobile trans helps you transfer photos, apps, songs, messages from SMS and WhatsApp, along with other popular messaging apps, videos, and even more while being easily compatible with a wide range of iOS and Android devices and even Windows phones. Forget the complications of having to use iTunes for your iPhone transfers. I despise using iTunes especially when it comes to transferring files between iOS and Android and iOS in a Windows PC. This all-in-one software is super easy to set up. Just download the app, plug in your phone you wish to back up to your PC or transfer to another phone, and you will be guided through the process step by step. It's really that easy. You can learn more by checking the link in the description down below to download Mobile Trans software today. And special thanks again to Wondershare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the video, shall we? So what we have here is actually really simple. There's not really a lot of building we need to do. We have this can of kit right here, which is a Raspberry Pi 4000 essentially. And it is basically a Commodore 64. I mean, really that's a new version of it. It's a keyboard that has a USB mouse plug-in and the actual Raspberry Pi and all the internals are inside the keyboard. And that keyboard has the HDMI out and everything that you need to be able to hook it up to a monitor, which just for fun, we're like, you know what, let's get a small external monitor for it. So it really fits the mini Raspberry Pi aesthetic. And then the only other thing we got was just an extra SD card, which you really don't need. It's just, it just only comes with a 16 gig that has Raspberry Pi OS. And we were like, you know what, let's get a really fast, large 128 gig in case we wanna add more to it. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is open this thing up, get it all set up and running, and then kind of decide how we want to proceed because we're debating whether or not to stick with the main OS that it comes with or try something a little bit different that might be better for gaming. So we'll just get into it. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and open this up. And just a disclaimer, Matt and I have done minimal research on this. So don't know a whole lot about it. I mean, we've gotten some Raspberry Pi samples here and there, but truthfully, the only time we've ever really like utilized a Raspberry Pi was that guy right over there, the arcade cabinet. And Zach honestly did most of the research on it. We just kind of built it. So we don't know a whole lot about these, but what I do know is that this is supposed to be very user friendly. I mean, you can see it's the Raspberry Pi 400. I said 4,000 at the beginning. I'm very embarrassed. Take a zero off. Yeah, take a zero off, take an L. You know what? It's all good though, because we're here, right? We bounce so, back. So yeah, basically what we have here is the Raspberry Pi 4 to my knowledge, which has its actual specs right here. This is four gigs of uh, DDR4, but it's low profile 3200, which is pretty cool. And then for the processor, it has a quad core 64 bit ARM architecture processor. And then it actually has dual band, uh, it looks like 802B and basically AC, all of the wireless. Um, you could have one actually has Bluetooth 5.1 and BLE, which is pretty cool. Gigabit Ethernet, look at that. It does have two USB 3s, a USB 2, um, and they come with some special stuff that they wanted to include because it's a Raspberry Pi. And the whole point behind Raspberry Pi is like, you know, adding all that cool stuff to it. You know, you want to make a new drone, you want to do this, you want to do that. Um, they actually made it to where those pins are still accessible. So I'll show you that once we get into the actual keyboard. Um, because there's just a little bit more to it than it just being a generic keyboard with some USBs and whatnot. But look how cute this thing is. This looks like a little keyboard. This looks like a little baby keyboard. So as you can see, the keyboard layout, pretty standard. We do have like this instead of like a Windows key. Because you gotta remember, this is not gonna be Windows. Um, but the keyboard, you know, low profile keys, not mechanical or anything, nothing fancy. And then back here, we have our micro SD. We have, it looks like dual HDMI minis, uh, USB-C for power, two USB 3s, a single USB 2, we have ethernet. And then right over here is that port I was talking about. It's a pin 40 port, which is where you can add all kinds of fun, crazy stuff to it. It's basically like a ribbon cable. Um, but they gave you like a little rubber cover for that because a lot of you might not be using it. A lot of you might just buy this as like a home theater system. It'd be great for like a security setup or it'd be great, great for emulators. That's basically what we do with our Raspberry Pi over there. And we actually have an older version and it plays all that stuff great. Um, we have their official Raspberry Pi mouse. It looks like we got the, I don't know if it's white or red. It just says white red. Hmm, white so, red. Could be both. I mean, it kind of looks like that's both. So I think we got the white and red combo. And they really do, they have a lot of fun with this stuff. I mean, this just looks retro. Like everything about this whole setup so far just gives me like Mario kind of vibes. It comes with a Raspberry Pi official USB power supply. Official. I'm liking all the official stuff, looks pretty nice. 
Um, here is a full size SD card uh, reader. So you can put your micro SD in there to actually transfer files and whatnot. And then uh, what do we have so here? a big old booklet. Big old booklet, look at that. This is the Raspberry Pi Beginner's Guide. Um, it's how to use your new computer and it is, I mean, that is thick. Lots of pictures though. Very helpful actually. I'm, I really hope you don't have to read this though. Cause that's, Matt and I can, I mean, we're YouTubers. We I can can't read. read. And it looks like right here, they actually, I, I really appreciate this. I was actually thinking this already. I'm like, we probably have some of these for our camera equipment, but it is very unlikely that we just had a mini HDMI lying around. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. And then uh, we'll go ahead and open up the monitor and make sure that that actually works together. I believe it's a 10.1 inch. There's not a whole lot of um, branding, I'm assuming, because this is probably just like a mass produced one that every single brand just basically puts their own name on. But it's LCD, um, definitely cheap. I mean, this thing was under a hundred bucks. And uh, you know, you might be thinking, well, for a small monitor, that's that's really cheap, but real, or probably, sorry, probably pretty expensive, but realistically, these are expensive because they're tiny. I mean, it has a tripod mount on it. Um, they're meant to be like portable and everything. And it comes with this little stand right here, which you know, we'll put that on there. Adorance. And then, yeah, it looks like it comes with a HDMI full-size cable. And then we have our power jack right here. And look, it matches, it's white. Um, but we have some like basic controls in the back, like menu, power up, down, um, LED power and then does have HDMI uh, or sorry VGA HDMI a headphone jack and our power and then it looks like it has speakers in the back so we should be able to get some bump and sound out of this. I can so, see this also being something like a, a monitor for cameras like oh yeah uh, external monitors. 100%. That's probably what the tripod mount is there for um, but yeah I, I was looking at like a slightly higher res one that was like a 7.1 inch but I was like well okay that's like this is 10.1 and this is already pretty small so I figured it would make more sense to get a lower res one so that this has a better chance of running some actual like decent games out there um, and not struggling so there, there, there's that setup that's pretty simple let's go ahead and plug this in plug in our rasp pie power time a raspberry pie power time for the raspberry pie bing bong welcome welcome I don't know if that's for the monitor or the Raspberry Pi. I don't think this is on yet. Oh, the HDMI. Oh, oh there we go. The HDMI wasn't plugged in all the way. Okay. Um, Raspberry Pi 4, get four gigs. It's reading the SD card right now, which I think is in there. The SD card's not even in there. So it's <laughs> it doesn't even have anything to boot to at the moment. Let's get the SD card in that it came with just to see. It should be booting straight to the uh, Raspberry Pi OS. Um, I know Matt's used Linux before in the past. I have almost no experience with Linux. Um, I know that they kind of make the interface somewhat similar to Windows on, on most of the OSs, just so it's, you know, navigatable. You want to have a good UI, uh, but they also are supposed to be easy to run. That's kind of the whole point of Linux is it's free. It's very open source and it's very easy to run because you got to remember this is a very cheap system that's not super high end. Um, I think we're, to restart I think here we're in doing a some boot loop in here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to let us in eventually. Right, I see the power blinking. Oh, oh look, look at, at that. that. Okay, that was a quick boot up. I mean, I just put that SD in. Um, so welcome to Raspberry Pi, a few things. Let's, let's see what we got. Um, we're not in the United Kingdom, we're in the United Phoenix. What is that, a DAC? Uh, can we be Chicago? <laughs> Low Louisville is actually... <laughs> they know where we are. Uh, we use the English language. Do we though? the US keyboard. Barely the English language. Yeah, we're YouTubers, so we hardly speak it. All right, guys. So what we're going to do now, after we got everything plugged up, is we're going to get whatever games we can run on this set up and good to go, and uh, then we'll just test it and see how it actually works. All right, guys. So this is one of the first times you're getting to see the Raspberry Pi up and running, and uh, we posted this on social media, and a lot of you guys are like, "Whoa, Windows and a Raspberry Pi." Well, it's not really Windows. We basically went through and installed this Pi Apps application. Uh, let's see, we can open it here. It's really hard to see, by the way. I'm sure that for the camera, it's even harder. Um, and that, that, is, that is not what we were looking for. Let's see if we can actually find it. So we gotta go over here to Accessories, Pi Apps is what it's called. And then it loads up this little application here. But we can go through and we can customize the appearance, like whatever we want. So. As you can see, there's all different kinds of like Linuxes, there's Mac OS theme, uh, but we decided to go with the Windows theme so you guys are, you know, nice and familiar with it. So it's literally just a theme, basically just masks things up. Um, but hey, you got like task manager, all that <laughs> stuff. Um, but we did go ahead and install a few different things that we thought would be kind of applicable to the audience. So we have Doom, we have Minecraft, and this is the slightly upgraded Minecraft. It's not like the OG Pi edition, it's the uh, 
Pi Edition Reborn. Uh, we actually installed Steam, which we're still a little bit iffy on. Like, you can actually open it and install games and everything. We did go ahead and put in our 128 gig SD card, but the games actually have to be compatible with this actual Linux software. And on top of that, I mean, you know, you could just, it'd make more sense to do streaming basically, which this does allow you to do by installing the stream, uh, Steam streaming software. I went and installed Ultimaker Kira, which is like what you'd use for 3D rendering on, uh, you know, 3D printer, because this would be a great little 3D printer workstation. And I don't even know what this is, YouTube buddy. <laughs> you just I figured it. I, it looked cool. And I was like, you know, maybe now think about it. Like, I mean, we have a Google Chromium, but like, can we go to YouTube with that easily? So I was like, maybe we'll try this too. Yeah, the Doom 3, which we can go ahead and launch, is actually a Doom demo. I ran this the other day, and it's a copy of the demo that was probably sent out back in the day when they used to send out demos for games went live. Did you hit run or execute? <laughs> I don't know what I hit, man. It's I normally hit see. execute, and that's what gives. Execute in terminal? Oh, I probably should have done that. There you Hello? go. All right, here we are. We're in business. Can we go full screen, though? I think you can. As far as, far as I got was to the main menu. And it actually plays sound here in a second. Uh-oh. Uh oh no. Here we go. This is the action we've been waiting for. Oh my oh. god, what is that? I'm gonna kill it, whatever it is. What the f no. <laughs> <laughs> Is he gonna turn into a zombie? Oh, oh god! <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> Take him out! Take Bro, him out! Bro, why is he not dying? Oh, oh shot shoot! Out. Oh my god! Jackson survived the demo. Oh wow. All units, this is Sergeant oh my god! That's <laughs> huge. Dude, that, that's the Doom, the Doom physics we needed. I feel like I need to play this now, dude. Yeah. It's kind of spooky. I never played Doom before. I've only played the new ones, and I, the new ones weren't really like, I feel like there's no story. No, there isn't. All right, well. That's I, Doom. I think you guys have gotten the gameplay. I mean, it's playable. It really didn't bog down much more during uh, Heavy Battle, but now lowering the resolution like to like, you know, the 480 or whatever, you'll definitely get like a smooth 30 at least. All right, guys, let's test another game. All right, guys, we are now in Minecraft Pi Edition Reloaded. We're going to survival Reborn. mode, and our goal is to get some wood and build a box house. Let's do it. Because we do that now, we have golds. But uh, yeah, look at that. It's, oh, you know, I remember what we need to do. Function Alt F11. Boom. Oh, increased FPS just Look off at that, of easy peasy. Now this is the Pi edition of Minecraft. It's a little bit cut down. It basically is like the Xbox version of Minecraft. Um, all this stuff is pretty similar to that. Um, so it is not as feature rich, um, but you can still technically play Minecraft and have no sound whatsoever while doing it. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the sound. Normally you're gonna have sound. I'm sure it's just something we don't have turned on, but you guys wouldn't be able to hear it anyways. Yeah, don't worry about it. So I'm going to build a box and call it my home. Me home. But yeah, the actual um, Raspberry Pi OS does actually come with Minecraft, like pre-installed. It's just very, very dumbed down. Like it seemed like it was only creative mode and uh, there wasn't really much you could do. So we did have to download this Raspberry Pi apps to be able to get the actual, like, I guess you'd call it closer to console version. Um, you know, much like a console, it's not like PC where you go through and individually um, add items to craft. It's basically like a pre-made list. And as long as you have those items, you can craft it. So yeah, a little bit different than normal Minecraft, but you know, it's still Minecraft. Yeah, it's still fun. Yeah. And Matt's getting ready to build a baller AF house. It's gonna be the best house you've ever seen. I'm seeing it coming, I'm seeing it coming. Oh, no, we're not gonna have enough for a roof. We're gonna have a sunroof right here. <laughs> a partial sunroof. All right, That's your go. entrance. There we go, this is how you get in. Look at my house, it's beautiful. Yeah, but all jokes aside, I mean, it's just kind of cool with this uh, kind of technology that's in a keyboard that you can actually play some games like this that normally wouldn't run on some like built systems. So it's kind of cool to see out the Raspberry Pi. Um, we'll just see what some of these other apps are, I guess, before we totally wrap this up. But uh, yeah, I don't even know how to get out of here. We're struggling. All right, guys, and just a brief intermission here to show you guys some of the work you could do on one of these. So this is Cura, which is by Ultimaker. A lot of you guys probably use it if you do any 3D printing. We just have like a basic filament holder here. But I mean, as you can see, it's pretty responsive. There's obviously a little bit of lagging here and there. Let's see what happens if we actually slice this file. See if it just completely breaks it. Yeah, not bad. All right, so it actually can do all that. 
Uh, we can go check out like the stages here, go to preview. I'm sure this will probably really break it. It's just not even being built. It's like, I don't want to see it. It ain't even happening. It might be because we don't actually have a 3D printer hooked up. Maybe, I don't really know. But no, it looks like overall though, I mean, it works fairly well. It's not as laggy as I thought it would be. So if you're into doing like CAD work, um, you know, 3D printing stuff like that, then uh, these little Raspberry Pis will actually handle it. Okay, so the last thing we're testing is this YouTube Buddy, which it looks like it just pulls videos <laughs> from YouTube and I, I guess you can watch them or is it like a YouTube downloader maybe? Oh, there we go. Ooh, that nice and loud. So I mean, you know, home theater PC would definitely work. You could download like Netflix or something. There we go. 4K, 4K, 4K. Dude, you could definitely it is download not Netflix. Do 4K. Let's just see what happens, right? What are we at on audio? Oh, you can't even go to 4K. Oh, wow, yeah. Do we get 1080 60? It's a 60 hertz screen at 1080, it better. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that, <laughs> that doesn't look like 60. Oh, it is 30. Oh, that is kind of lagging. <laughs> it's kind of chugging there. Chugging, chug, chugging, but hey, it does it. So uh, yeah, this is just, again, there's so many other uses for a Raspberry Pi. This yes. is just one of them that we wanted to try to see what it can actually do because we like to game on mini PCs and it was kind of cool to have all this stuff inside a keyboard. So yeah, Raspberry Pi, there it is. No, this is Raspberry Pi with Windows, God. duh. Um, yeah, let's just wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys. So, you know, overall, this thing is pretty cool. You got to remember, this was under $200 total. We got a basically working computer inside of a keyboard. We got a mouse. We got a screen, all of the necessary cables. We have Bluetooth. We have Wi-Fi built in. Under 200 bucks. Now, what will 200 bucks get you on the used market? It will get you a laptop. I mean, you can get yourself a Chromebook. You can get yourself an old Alienware or something like that. There is some gaming options out there that will actually run Windows 10. They'll actually play some games. And, you know, while this isn't like necessarily the greatest deal for that you got to remember this has some really cool customization to it and on top of that you do have that big din port in the back where you can do all kinds of different raspberry pi related things for all the enthusiasts out there so if you're gonna pick any of the stuff that was featured in today's video links in the description down below the affiliate links and they will help us out if you guys have any raspberry pi projects or raspberry pi things you want to see here on the toasty bros channel let us know down below we're not very experienced with it but if it's a cool idea we might consider diving into it so as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye. And hey, if you don't want something like this, something that'll actually play games and that's not much more than this, you should check out our PC selling business. PCBros.tech, we sell budget gaming PCs and really high-end gaming PCs. Whatever your budget, we can find something for you. PCBros.tech, check out our website or come in person. See you guys later. Goodbye.